That's another one. That might be the highest yet. It's so good. I'm seven from seven with it. Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. You're joining me again today at Portsmouth Golf Centre for another brand new for 2024 golf iron. This time we're testing the Ping G730. Really, really love Ping products if you've watched my channel before. So really keen to give this super game improvement iron a hit and see how it performs in my hands as an average swing speed mid handicap golfer. Let's get stuck in. So I've just got the Ping G730 irons in my hand for the very first time. And the first thing I want to talk about is the strap line from Ping this year is that these irons are their longest, most forgiving irons ever made with the average golfer getting five yards of additional distance through the bag with these irons versus any other previous Ping model. That sounds really, really impressive. So how have they done it? Well, the whole or the key bit of technology this year is the new face technology that Ping have installed. And I'm just going to read this out to you from the iPad to make sure I get the wording right. Ping are saying they've employed a Hyper 17.4 stainless steel heat treated face, which has allowed them to thin it and optimize its overall structure to increase flexing and help lower the CG, which will deliver higher launching shots with ball speed gains and approximately five more yards of distance. They are all claims we'll put to the test when we start hitting some shots in a second. They also say this cavity back design has got some powerful sound, so we'll listen out for that when we're hitting shots and see how it sounds versus other irons that I've tested. And the other big claim that Ping are saying is it delivers extreme forgiveness and that's immediately evident when you start to look at this iron down at address. You can see that it's got a large amount of offset. That will put some of you off, but for someone who needs as much help as they can get, it will inspire a lot of confidence. So will that top line that's very, very thick. You can see a little bit of the cavity back construction stick sticking out of the back of the iron at address. Again, that should inspire a lot of confidence, but if you're someone who doesn't like that, maybe these aren't the irons for you because I definitely think you'll see it in the six and the five iron, less so as you move down the rest of the bag. You also have that bottom groove filled in in the white paint, which is very, very typical of Ping. And you also have the number of the iron on the face as well. So there's no mistakes of pulling the wrong club out the bag and not noticing it until after you've hit the shot. If we turn the iron over, we have got a really chunky sole. It really is closer to almost a hybrid construction, how chunky this sole is. But again, that's gonna maximize the forgiveness on those th fat shots or those thin shots and try and give you the best ability to hit a shot as close to normal as you possibly can. Everything about these irons does scream distance. Everything about them does scream forgiveness. So let's hit some shots and let's put that to the test. That's not a bad shot. Numbers there, 109 of ball speed, 157 of carry. Spinning at 4628, which is not bad for an iron, again with 28 degrees of loft on it, and launching peak height and land angle, all really good considering that was a massive toe strike, which is everything you would expect this iron to do, be super forgiving when you don't hit it out of the middle, and that does inspire confidence. God, it's gone high. The sound it makes is quite a loud sound. I've tested a couple of irons tonight, including hitting my own iron. It definitely sounds louder off the face than both of those irons. Again, you always get some slightly different acoustics in here in the bay versus out on the grass, but it does feel like quite a loud sound. Ball speed there though, look at that. Super, super impressive. 111 mile an hour of ball speed, carrying at 160, spinning at 4.6, two consistent spins in a row. Peak height of 77 feet is very consistent too. Launched at 17.6 and land angle at 42. Again, like they're really good numbers. As good as anything you're gonna see me get out of a game improvement iron. And it does feel like any other ping iron out there. So I don't think you're giving anything up versus any other pings except for the looks in return for a load of forgiveness. I think I've hit that one out of the middle because it's gone absolutely incredible. That is an unreal golf shot. Wow. I say wow quite a lot on this channel when I hit good shots, but that one did feel really, really good. 110 of ball speed, carrying at 158.5, total 170, spinning at 4.7, launching at 18.7, peak height of 81.7 feet, land angle 44. Like, let's just remember this is 28 degrees of static loft and it's launching at 19 degrees. That's so impressive and just testament to how they're able to construct these game improvement irons with strong lofts that still launch and deliver incredible ball flights. That did feel really good, really, really good. I don't think I caught that one completely clean, but it just feels like it's flown exactly the same as the others. Be really interested to see where the strike location is on that one. 
it was just a little bit low and a little bit toe. But look at that, 110.6 of ball speed still, carried the same at 159, spinning at 4647, launch peak height, land angle, all really good. Like it wasn't a perfect strike and the numbers are nearly identical, nearly identical. Really, really impressed. Really impressed with this out the gate. Super, super golf club from Ping. It's just on repeat. 111.6 of ball speed, carrying at 162 because I've centered the strike this time as you can see on the screen. That spin rate stayed the same at 4528, 18.5 of launch, 83 feet of peak height with 44 degree of land angle. That's so, so impressive from a club with 28 degrees of loft. Ping, you know how to make good golf clubs. Again, I might not prefer the feel of these irons versus my own ones, but if it's numbers v numbers, you're not gonna beat these very, very easily. They're so good. I've pulled it ever so slightly and it's still flown miles in the air. It's another really good shot. 113 of ball speed, that's just huge. 168 of carry, wow. Admittedly the spin has dropped down from that pull ever so slightly and that is maybe a little bit concerning how much it's dropped off. But again, for a pull to go 88 feet in the air and launch at 19 degrees and land at 44 degrees, absolutely take it as the handicapped golfer. You absolutely would. So good. It's another one. That might be the highest yet. It's so good. I'm seven from seven with it. Seven from seven. This hasn't happened at all that I've ever got seven shots into a video and thought I don't need to edit one of those shots out. And that is testament to these irons and how effortlessly easy they are to hit. The real disappointing thing there is it felt great and Trackman's picked up the ball speed at 112 and the launch angle, but it's just not picked up the rest of the numbers, I'm really ashamed to say. Yep, that's another one. Tiny bit of a pull. It's so high, like absolutely flying into the air. Jesus, I've towed that 14 mil out the toe and it's generated 113 mile an hour of ball speed, carried 165, still spun at 4,300 and it's still 80 feet in the air. I'm a little bit in shock at how good these numbers are ping. So, so good. If you are a handicapped golfer and you want a consistent iron that's gonna help you lower your handicap and you're willing to just put maybe the best feel to one side or maybe the best looks to one side and you pick pure performance, you've gotta test these, they're so good. And another, absolutely awesome. The interesting thing here is I'm starting to get a little bit tired. My club head speed's dropped a little bit. When I was filming earlier, I was closer to 80 mile an hour, 79, 80 mile an hour, which is max for me. I've dropped down to 77 and I'm still getting 112 ball speed, which is just incredible and carrying it 163 with a spin rate of 4.2. And again, that was a slight pull. And it's the lowest probably ball flight we've seen at 75 feet. It's great, absolutely great. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible, what a golf shot, what a golf club. 110 of ball speed, 159 carry, 4.4 of spin, 85 feet of peak height with a 45 degree land angle. Like, that's just absolutely insane. Right, done hitting shots with the Ping G730. First impressions in the bay, unbelievably consistent performance, shot after shot, so, so forgiving, some incredible numbers, particularly considering how strong the loft is on these seven irons. And I'm really keen to go home now and dissect it and compare all that Trackman data versus my own seven iron and bring that all to life for you. So let's do that now. So let's see if the aggregated data backs up the performance that I was seeing in the bay shot by shot. Now, before we start the comparison against the batch of shots I hit with my own club, the Mizuno JPX923 Forged, it's worth noting that my seven iron is 30 degrees. That's two degrees weaker than the strong lofted Ping G730. Now starting on the left hand side, you can see that my club head speed with the Ping G730 was only 0.2 mile an hour faster, but the ball speeds were 2.1 mile an hour faster. This means the smash factor was also higher with the Ping G730. Yeah, as you can see from the strike location, I was favoring a toe strike with both golf clubs on the day. And I think this demonstrates both the speed and the forgiveness of the Ping irons. Now back to the data, you can see that the spin rate with the ping irons was approximately 500 RPM lower on average. However, as you saw in the bay, the consistency of those ping irons was very impressive, with the first five shots in particular, all having spin rates within 170 revs of each other. 
Next we come on to that ball flight, which was just simply brilliant and actually quite shocking, but in a good way, considering the loft of that Ping 7 iron. As you can see here, the launch angles, peak heights, which on their own were 20% higher, and land angles were all significantly higher than my own Mizuno JPX forged. Finally, onto those all important distances. The carry distance with the Ping G730 was 8.2 yards longer on average, with 7.7 .7 yards more total distance. This also means that the Ping iron stopped 0.5 yards quicker. That's thanks to the strength of the ball flight being worth more in terms of stopping power than the reduced spin rates versus my Mizuno irons. As always, I'd like to show you my shot dispersion. As you can see from the 10 shots shown, five of them in particular were landing almost on top of each other. Another example of the consistency of the Ping G730 irons. Now, based upon how easy I found it to pick up and hit these irons, and just how good all of that TrackMan data was that we just walked through, I think it's fair to say that the overall package that Ping have delivered in the G730 irons makes them a serious contender in the Super Game Improvement iron category. Now before we wrap up the video, I just want to give you a couple of other considerations before you rush out and buy these irons. The first thing to note is the longest iron that Ping offer in this set is a 5 iron, but they do offer speciality wedges up to a 56 degree at the other end of the bag. But if you are someone who typically plays longer irons at that part of the bag, you might need to consider how you're going to gap this in with the rest of your golf bag. The second thing to note is that like lots of Ping Gold Clubs over the last couple of years, Ping do offer three different loft options in the G730 irons. You've got the standard loft options, which are the ones that we used in this video. There then is the power spec for golfers needing to eke out even more distance. And there is a retro spec, which offers slightly weaker lofts for the golfer who needs a little bit more help to get the golf ball up into the air. Next consideration for me is the feel of ping irons. If you aren't someone who's ever previously played a ping iron before, I do think the feel can take a couple of shots to get used to, and some people won't like how solid it feels versus lots of other irons they maybe have previously played. But what I would say is if you have tested or played ping irons before and like the feel of them, to me these do feel exactly the same as any other ping iron that I've tested on the channel in the last couple of years. The final point I want to touch on is the price. At £1,029 for 5 iron to pitching wedge in the UK, they are one of the more expensive super game improvement irons available on the market and £200 more expensive than the Ping G430 that's been out for only a year or so and is in the game improvement category. So that is definitely something to consider before you part with your money. Now all that's left for me to say is if you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not yet subscribed to Weekend Tour Pros, hit that button down below. And if you ring the bell icon, you'll get notified of all my videos as they land on YouTube every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.